Hello and welcome to the R tutorial for the difference in two population means. This video will show you how to conduct a two samples independent t-test using R. We are going to examine the Pima data set. This is a very interesting data set which can be found on our Canvas page or using the link in the video description below. At this link you will also find a full description for all of the variables in this data set. Our goal is to test whether the average body mass index is different for female Pima Indians with diabetes as compared to those that do not have diabetes. This means that our null hypothesis is that the average BMI for female Pima Indians is the same for those with and without diabetes. And our alternative hypothesis is that the average BMI for female Pima Indians is different for those with and without diabetes. I would like to point out that the diabetes variable is coded such that zero means that the person does not have diabetes and one means that the person does have diabetes. Recall when conducting a two independent samples t-test, we first must decide if we will be using a pooled or unpooled procedure. There are multiple ways to check this assumption. For example, we could look at the box plots. To do this, go to graphs, box plot, and we will choose the variable BMI and then select the option plot by groups and choose diabetes and click OK. We see that the BMIs for each the IQRs for the BMIs seem to be pretty similar, which would suggest that a pooled procedure might be appropriate. Another method to check which procedure to use would be to look at the sample standard deviations. To do this, go to statistics summaries, numerical summaries. Choose BMI and then summarize by groups and choose our grouping variable diabetes and click OK. We see that the sample standard devi deviations are very similar 7.689 as compared to 7.275. Again this would suggest that a pooled procedure would be advisable. The final method we can use to check which procedure to use is Levine's test. Recall that the null hypothesis for this test is that the population variances are equal and the alternative hypothesis is that the population variances are not equal. We also always use the standard 10% significance level when conducting a Levine's test. To do Levine's test we go to statistics, variances, and choose Levine's test. The factors part is asking you to identify that group by variable we used earlier for box plots. For this, it would be diabetes. And the response variable is our outcome of interest, in this case, BMI. Finally, we meet, need to make sure that the center is selected to be mean and not median. So we check that box and then click OK. We see the two variances of the groups and below is an output with an F statistic and a p-value. These are the two values we are interested in from the output. The F statistic is another test statistic that comes from the F distribution. We will learn more about this later in the semester. For now, it is important for us to look at the corresponding p-value, which is found to be 0.1553. We compare it to our standard Levine's alpha of 0.10. So our decision would be to fail to reject that the population variances are equal and therefore use a pooled variance procedure. Now that we know which procedure to use, we go to statistics, means, independent samples t-test. We choose our groups to be diabetes and our response variable to be BMI. We then go over to the options tab and for our example, our alternative hypothesis was two-sided, so we select that option. Notice by default, you can, R also makes a confidence interval when it does a hypothesis test. So you can also modify the confidence level here. Finally, you can choose whether or not to tell R to assume equal variances. If we say yes, then R will use a pooled procedure, and if we say no, R will use an unpooled procedure. Based on our numerical summary, box plots, and Levine's test, we will choose to use option yes, which will be pooled, and we click OK. 
Now our two samples t-test output, which includes our test statistic, degrees of freedom, and p-value, is shown below. We can also see the confidence interval for the difference in the two population means. We notice that our test statistic is negative, meaning that our BMI for those without diabetes was smaller than those with diabetes. Using a significance level of 5%, we also see that our p-value is very small and that we have evidence to conclude that the average BMI for female Pima Indians with diabetes is different than the average BMI for female Pima Indians without diabetes. We also see that our output gives a confidence interval for the difference in the two groups, and that does not contain zero. That's all I have for your tutorial on two independent samples t-tests. Have a wonderful week.